Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and we're watching an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer here. Why are we doing that? Uh, because I wanted to show you that I'm running Google Android on a television here, or actually in this case it's a monitor, a 21 inch Dell monitor, but we're running the Google Android application um, of Netflix, and it runs reasonably well on a big screen, um, and streams video, surfs the web, does all sorts of other things that you would expect. But it also has a custom application launcher which is sort of meant for using on a TV sized screen with remote control. It's not a particularly good remote control, but it does have sort of buttons that let you navigate and move back and forth and so forth. And so how am I doing this? I'm not uh, hooking up my phone to a TV. Instead, I'm using something called the Minix Neo G4. And it's a little device that looks like it's about the same size as a USB flash drive, but it's got an HDMI port, a micro USB port, and a full-size USB port. And um, also a micro SD card slot for extra storage and a receiver. So if you point the remote at the receiver, you can navigate through the user interface that way. It's, um, it's a little device that basically has the guts of, say, an Android tablet or an Android smartphone. This particular model has a, um, a Rockchip RK3066 dual-core processor, 1 gig of RAM, 8 gigs of storage, and like I said, it's got a micro SD card slot so you can add more. I plugged in a USB mouse, and it works pretty well. You can also use a keyboard with it if you like, or in this case, I'm just using the on-screen keyboard. And like I said, we've got a web browser. You can use the on-screen keyboard. And you've got Android 4.0 user interface here. Now, among other things, you'll note that this model does have The Google Play Store comes pre-installed, so that means you can download third-party apps, including the Netflix app like I just showed you. Um, one thing that I have noticed is that when you're using the uh, custom app launcher, this grid show app launcher, it's got video player, music player, and so forth. And um, so if you load media onto the uh, internal storage or onto a USB flash drive or a micro SD card slot, you should be able to use it to play all sorts of uh, different types of videos. Um, I tried to hook it up to, uh, to my network, my shared network drive, and the default uh, file explorer and um, the default video player didn't really seem to like that very much. Um, but it uh, should work if you're using local media and uh, you know, I'm sure there's some third-party applications that you can get that would work pretty well. Now another thing that really makes this guy special though is that you'll notice on the remote control here there's a power button uh, as well as volume buttons and search button and media playback controls and so forth. Um, but that power button is something that really helps set this apart from a lot of other similar devices. We've seen other USB sized, uh, USB flash drive sized uh, mini computers in recent months, um, but this has uh, a software off function, which is something that uh, is missing from some of these others. Basically, in order to turn this guy on and off, you just unplug it. Um, this one, you can go ahead and hit the power button and it turns off the screen much like a Android smartphone would. Press the power button again and wait a moment, don't don't get too rash because it'll take a second for the screen to come back on. And then if you press and hold the power button you get a shutdown option. Um, now what impressed me the most is that in addition to the shutdown option when the device is entirely off you can press the power button again um, and it'll actually turn back on. It takes a while to turn back on so since it doesn't actually use a lot of power it might actually be a good idea to leave it running much of the time, but if you want to power it down entirely and then reboot it, you can. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the Netflix app alone is probably going to make this worthwhile for some people. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. Sometimes it takes a moment to know if it's working, unfortunately. There we go. Um, but the Netflix app alone might make it worth it for some people who are just looking for an inexpensive device that they can plug into a television and use to stream Netflix over the internet. Of course, you still need a Netflix subscription, um, but you can also use this for YouTube videos, other video sites. So the ability to stream media online is pretty cool. Um, and actually, you know, the boot speed is not bad, considering that was a cold boot. 
Um, the device also comes with a little sort of HDMI adapter, so if you don't want to plug in a long cable, you can just plug this right in and then plug the whole thing into your TV. Uh, power adapter, which I believe this is European or something, I don't know, it's something that doesn't work for me, um, but you can use a standard micro USB to USB cable, so if you have a computer, you can plug it into a computer to draw power, or you can plug it into a uh, wall adapter, and it does come with a micro USB cable. Um, as I mentioned, this particular model has an RK3066 processor, it's Mali 400 graphics, uh, 802.11bgn Wi-Fi, um, it supports USB 3G dongles if you have one, and in fact you can even use this as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So you can plug in a USB 3G dongle and then use this to uh, share an internet connection with your phone, tablet, laptop, whatever. Um, USB 2.0 port, micro USB OTG port, which means that you can uh, plug in uh, basically two USB devices at once, but you'll need to make sure that one works with a full-size USB port and the other works with a uh, micro USB. And you can also um, use it um, a, a USB hub, I suppose. Um, it's a, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough power for a USB hub, so you might want one that actually has its own power supply if you're using a small amount of power for this, but uh, overall it's a, it's a pretty versatile little device and it has a fairly good wireless connection um, and it doesn't get too warm. It definitely gets a little bit warm, but there's nice ventilation around the sides. Um, the biggest problem I see with it so far is that if you want to use the remote control you really do have to make sure that it's pointed in at the right direction. If I have it pointed here, you can see that we're navigating. If I turn it around, nothing happens. So, um, if you wanted to plug it into the back of a TV or something, that's clearly not going to work. Um, but you can use a wireless mouse or some other device um, if you had a, a RF remote that's able to work with Android or something. Um, so anyways, that's just a quick look at what this guy can do. Um, you can find more details at lilliputing.com. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.